Oh, girl, that food was good. Good. Ah, uh, now, you, now you, do you do you eat regularly? Because that's the key, you know. It's the exercise, but it's eating, like you know, because the meal plan I, I'm on. I'm not going to mention their name because right. I have to pay full right. price Which for I'm it. Which I'm trying to change. You're, but and we, yeah, because you're on it. You're I'm starting, starting it. it too, and um, I did it years ago. Yeah, and same company. Same company. Yes, I believe they were called something and then changed to this. Was, were they called McDonald's before? Um, yes, and you weren't supposed to say that. <laughs> it's our big secret. Yeah, well, I, you know, I they send me three meals and two snacks. And I'm getting two meals and one snack. That sounds like math. I just And I'm getting less food because I don't eat that much. Well, but that's the point. If you eat more, you will lose more LBs because your body says, oh, this girl is trying to feed me. I'm going to have to, I don't got to say. And I've been no. reading study after study after study saying that's bullshit. Really? Especially the more and more I read about intermittent fasting, but that's a whole different topic. The point is... I don't want food, food to go to Food will go to waste, yeah. and I and that's okay. Well, not if I could help it. Yeah. Now, I do have my husband, and I do have kids. My yeah. husband will eat it. He's a great pickup man, and they're healthy. But the point is, these meals are big. You keep saying that. I don't eat all of them. I, you know. That's large. That is large. It's large. But wouldn't how wild would it be if McDonald's and Burger King and Wendy's and Taco Bell actually serve this kind of food? Well, they claim that they do, meaning... They have salad options or things like that. But once you put the crispy fried chicken on a salad or you put your salad in a deep fried tortilla, a taco shell, how are you going to eat the salad and not eat the taco shell? That's true. And also, they also put a lot of salt in there and sugar in their food. Tons. These meals don't have any of that. No. These meals have olive oil, vinegar. Wait, what did you just call me? I will tell you this. I do have a big bottle of hot sauce on that counter and as soon and that's got sodium and as soon as I get that meal out of the microwave I douse that But baby even dousing your food in hot sauce is never going to be the same as like if you're given a sauce. You're never going to use as much hot sauce as you would use a sauce. That's true. And see, when you said that, I'm picturing dousing my panties in hot sauce. Both work for me. Your food first, then your panties. Then my panties. Yeah, I think hot sauce is okay. The food, your, the relationship with food. Because now, listen, I've known you for a long time. I've seen you. When we used to do that thing at the radio station where we would have a, a table full of candy and... Not Reese's Monkeys, but Reese's Peanut, peanut butter, butter Cups. cups. Yeah. And I would see you take a bite, Michelle. This is very telling. I'd see you take a bite and then spit it out into the trash can. Yeah, it's called an eating disorder. <laughs> I don't mean to oh, laugh. No, I'm open about my struggles. Girl, I have battled that demon since I was 13 years old, more or less. Well, but why would you spit a Reese's Peanut Butter Cup in the garbage? Well, I just had to taste a little bit in my mouth. I just had to feel the texture. And then I had to get rid of it before the calories sit in. Honey, that's an all game, girl. You know, Dolly Parton says she would chew and spit. Yeah, but you can't chew a Reese's peanut butter cup because it melts. It melts. So you put it in, you let it kind of get the flavor, and then you spit it out. I don't believe the Dolly Parton thing. I think she's just saying that. Because remember when she was heavy? No, she kept her weight off for like 20 plus years. Oh, no, it's been off since 89, 87. Well, back in those days, she was well, she, she was voluptuous. When's the last time you saw 9 to 5? Um, Not too long ago. She looks hot and she's sexy in it them titties are real big old titties bouncing are they real now no so they were real back then but see when she lost the weight she had to put the implants right in. because the titty has fallen yeah that's what happens but she's been amazing and what i will say is for a long time i i get upset and talk about reality shows because they are kind of exploiting women and how they treat each other and I, it's kind of gross so i got turned off to that but the positive note that I do want to give reality TV credit for is they've opened people's eyes, Hollywood's eyes, that women come in all different shapes and sizes. What reality shows are you watching? Well, Mama June ain't no skinny bitch. Yeah, but now they have a whole show around her getting skinny. Amen to that. But I'm so excited because there's so many different sized people yeah. on all these shows now. The thing is, you know, the secret self. Everybody has a secret self. And, you know, that part of you, when you're, when you're, fantasizing and you want to get off if you know what I mean uh-huh there is that secret self that has a fantasy of a person being a certain way and I think that most people have been programmed to think of that 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 thing that's going to get them off as to be an unattainable girl or guy they know from porn but you just from said porn. 
just said program. Yeah. The thing that happens with these kids and their bodies is their bodies change. And then there's these ideals set out there. And, you know, unless you're a genetic freak, like, you know, a Jane Fonda is, and trust me, she's worked hard. She's exercised her whole life. And I say this with love, but there's she's a bit of a genetic freak. Yeah, it's true. But you look out there and these kids see these, they have body image issues. And then they see these people in magazines or people, you know, that are, genetic or surgically enhancing their body and these these bodies are not attainable these body types are not attainable to these kids and in the end it's really dangerous to them but the in the fantasy world of their of their secret self uh danger and reason and and logistics and logic um they um they don't enter into that world but that's allowed to be fantasy and that's not the issue the issue is when fantasy they're trying to make fantasy into reality and that's what i battled with because i still fantasize about that every day but it gets dangerous when you're trying to bring fantasy into reality but in my head you wanted to impress anna wintour always but see you know what my secret self i love a big fat ass and I, you know what my secret self i love me some cellulite of course on a man but did you always yeah um my programming was never the reg the everyday programming though i liked things that were odd and i held my breath when they tried to uh program me i just held my breath you know me and my love for huge noses mm -hmm. oh i love that i understand but like with guys i was always I loved really ethnic looking men. It doesn't even matter the ethnicity, whatever it was. I like somebody who looks really ethnic. And um, for women, you know, I would, I liked a very specific type of woman, you know, um, really fit, beautiful. And of course, in my head, what I picture myself looking like to what reality is, is a little bit different. And just go show you at the end of the day, it's really all programming. Well, you know, it's just so interesting, the whole concept of the secret self, you know, most people aren't even aware they have a secret self, a secret self that is kind of um, like a secret Santa, like a secret Santa, but different, but more insidious. It's actually more. Uh, it actually is is the big shot caller. It's actually calling more shots than people are aware of. Is it kind of cousins to the inner saboteur? Sure. Yeah, they're best friends. Because I got to tell you, you know, whenever I've put on a lot of weight, I love the way my body looks, but I cannot work that way. But you can and you have. And I have. And I but I don't like the way I look in men's clothes that way most of my clothes are bought in a size six is that tiny well tiny is a zero two for me i mean six is tiny in comparison but i um most that's where i am i feel best at a size six or eight but um if i didn't watch what i eat i'd probably live at a size 12 and if i really packed it on i mean i've gone up to a size 16 and when i was pregnant forget about it mm. um but i have a lot of those tiny things you know the zeros and the twos that i I kept thinking one day that my daughters would wear them. They don't even like what I wore. And I just kind of have them hanging around hoping one day, although that'll never happen. Yeah. Haven't you sold some of those? I sold my actual clothes that I wear now at DragCon. You know, I've thought about it because, you know, this is the thing. I have all these suits, like the suit that I wore to the Hollywood Walk of Fame thing. That beautiful plaid suit. Yeah. I'll never be able to wear that again. So the problem with you is who besides Jeffrey Boyer Chapman could fit into your stuff? Oh, I should have him come over for a fitting. Yeah. And say, leave the boyfriend at home. Yes, honey. That's why I love Kate Middleton. That bitch will wear the same coat, same bag five times and not care. But honey, Cher never would have done that. So, but see, these are those are big ticket events, like you know, going to the Emmys, like that pink suit I wore at the Emmys. I can't wear that again. No, but things like the Walk of Fame suit. You think I can wear the Walk of Fame plaid tartan thing again? Why can't you? Who's stopping you? My secret self is stopping me, actually. Even if the entire Twitter blew up and was like, "Ooh, RuPaul was wearing the same suit." How would that affect your bills getting paid? Well, it doesn't affect it, but I told you the story of me in Rhode Island, Providence, Rhode Island, and there were no flights going to Providence, Rhode Island. And, and, this, and the, this club happened to be one of those kind of clubs where there's one way in and one way out. You had to go in through the front door and leave through the Fire front hazard. door. Fire hazard. Yes, exactly. So uh, Joelle and I uh, rented a minivan to drive from New York City, not that far, go to the club, pull up, I go in and, you know, go and do my show. And then leaving, everybody from the club is waiting outside for me through the front door. And in the back of the crowd, I'll never forget it, still ringing in my ears. Somebody said, 
RuPaul in a minivan, bitch. But what? Who cares? And that stuck with you forever? Forever. But you love minivans. I love minivans. I had a minivan when I lived in L- in LA all those How years How did that ago. make you feel? It made me feel like bitches are trying to come for my shit. You know, it's like, uh, RuPaul. And did that minivan ever affect your bills getting paid? It did not. In fact, I paid my bills from that moment. Meanwhile, oh, where do, oh, to the P- Critics' Choice Award, I wore that Alexander McQueen suit that I love. Only wear it, can only wear it once. No, you could wear it again. You think so? 100%. Or should I just fucking sell it? Both. Why would you sell it? It sounds like you love that suit. Why not just wear it one more time? Yeah, I don't have to wear it on a red carpet. I could wear it to a dinner. Uh, wear it to life. I could wear it in life. Yes, you don't have to wear it to an event. I've been with you a million times where you throw a nice suit on. You can wear it to one of those things. You know, out to dinner, to a dinner party, when you go downtown shopping, wherever it is. You can wear it again. I uh, bought this beautiful Catherine Delish robe for one of the challenges we did, like the Naughty Nighty challenge. And I sold that at DragCon. And that, where would I ever wear that again? It's an iconic piece that I'll never wear again. So I sold that at DragCon. I remember I was with you when you sold it at your booth. Correct. You sold it- I sold it to a lovely young drag queen who is a kept woman. Oh yeah, I remember. Yes, and the point is it's so beautiful. It's actual art. And this way it could be performed in, it could be luxuriated in, it could be lounged in, but it's better than sitting in my closet and doing nothing. And this way I know somebody will get the use out of it. And the same thing with your gorgeous suits. Yeah, they are. And you have never had a problem selling shit. Now, do you sell stuff on eBay still? Yes, I do still sell stuff on eBay, but I do it anonymously. And I've only ever been clocked once. I was buying a pair of sunglasses from some coin. And when I paid him, he recognized my PayPal account. Is that recognizable? Very. I know, but listen, I set it up 127 years ago. Oh, does it say your name? Kinda. I mean, you'll see it in there. It's like an eye chart. If you look, you'll see the visage in there. But the point is, I've been buying and selling on eBay since 96. You know this. From the beginning, I was down with eBay when I had to write down item numbers because there was no other way to track it. Like, that's how long ago. There was only one page of women's clothing. Like, now you can't even keep up with it. It was unbelievable. And if I sell stuff on eBay from Drag Race, I want to say it's from Drag Race, and that'll blow my cover. So what I'm going to have to do is start um, an eBay store where I can sell stuff as worn on me on eBay. And I know a lot of the girls sell their stuff on other sites because there's a million out there now and I belong to a few of them. The problem is the other ones charge so much, like 20% they keep, whereas eBay is much lower. I still think it's one of the lowest. And even though I still sell and buy on the other ones, eBay's still the way to go. I love it. I love it. We're going to go to break real quick, but we have Audra McDonald, incredible talent. We're going to talk to her in a minute. So stay with us. I'm just loving Squarespace. You know, they've been so good to us over the years and it's a really good product too. Four years they've been with us since day one. Yeah. Unbelievable. Making a website has never been easier and the reason we love Squarespace is because it's the truth. Yeah. We don't have to lie about it. They're unbelievable and unbelievable company. You can make gorgeous websites in minutes using their beautiful templates and that simplistic drag and drop platform check out squarespace.com slash rue for a free trial and when you are ready to launch that website use the offer code ru to save 10 percent off your first purchase of a website or a domain that's offer code ru it's squarespace now casper is an online retailer of premium mattresses at a fraction of the price and we both have casper mattresses i have a few you have several i love it you know i i think it's the most incredible revolutionary product out there I'm telling you, Casper brand mattresses combine multiple supportive supportive memory foams for a quality sleep service with the right amounts of both sink and bounce. They also have breathable designs which help you sleep cool because you know what? Sometimes you get all hot. Yeah. Not with Casper, honey. They regulate your body temperature throughout the night. They even arrive right to your doorstep in a transportable box. I just got the Casper Wave. I know you have the Casper yes. Wave. My daughter has the Casper Wave. I love it. If for some reason you're still not sure about getting a Casper, which is ridiculous at this point, you can be sure of your purchase with Casper's 100-night risk-free sleep-on-it trial, and you can get $50 towards select mattress purchase by visiting casper.com slash rue and using that offer code RU at checkout. Terms and conditions apply. It's Casper. You know, uh, we talked about uh, Jane Fonda a minute ago, and uh, we haven't talked about my walk of fame, have we? No, let's talk about it now. I, I've only, I've saw it when they un- unveiled it, and then George and I went to dinner uh, uh 
that Friday night or some. So, and you went back to see it? Well, they didn't have our table ready. We went to Catalina Bar and Grill and saw a uh, R&B singer from the 90s, Aaron Hall. Female. Keisha Cole. No, she had a Lifetime TV movie. Monica. Uh, Brandy. It's going to come to me in a minute. Uh, My brain just flooded. Um, anyway, they weren't ready for us. So. Monica. No, it's not Monica. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to move on. Wait a minute. Okay. Okay. My brain just flooded. Give me more. You know how when the, oh, I, I see an M, I see an I, I see a. Keisha. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to, it'll come to you. So they weren't ready for us. They said, well, um, come back in 15 minutes. So we said, well, sure. Let's just walk up just Hollywood Boulevard. And t-. I said, well, George, look, okay, we're going to walk up here, but I, I can't Misha stop. Misha Paris. No. And that's my, that's where my brain gets stuck. My brain gets stuck on Misha Paris, but it's, but it's not, not Misha Paris. Um, okay. M people? No. She black. She, her name is, uh, okay, it's not going to come to me. Um, 90s? She was at the Catalina Grill, Bar and Grill, about a month ago. Brandy, Monica, Deborah Cox, Tony Braxton, Erica Badu, Shantae Moore. Oh, remember Shantae Moore? Shanice. No. No. Uh, what What are you looking at? What's your list? Don't be hating on my list. What was it called? Uh, the Catalina Bar and Grill on Sunset here in Los Angeles, Galice. Anyway, so we walked up to the Hollywood Boulevard Walk of Fame, the star thing. I said, George, okay, look, I can't stop on this thing because people. I don't want people to see me looking at my thing. Why? Oh, my God. Because it's weird. Are you kidding me? It's your dream. No, I'm going to look at it again, but I, I didn't. I felt very sub, sub, self-conscious. Okay. All right. I'll give you that. Yeah. So I kept walking. I looked down at it. I kept walking. And he stayed. And he took a picture and he luxuriated in it. And I just. Mickey Howard. Mickey Howard. I fucking Mickey love Howard. Mickey Howard. I wouldn't have gotten to that. You see? You see? What did I say? I saw, an, I saw an M. Yeah. And an I. An I. Yeah. My brain. That's what my brain does. That's why I keep going to Misha Paris. From Chicago. Misha Paris, Mickey, Mickey Howard, Howard. Fair enough. And apparently, I did not see her Lifetime movie. I didn't know she had one. A, she had a Lifetime movie. And apparently, after the early 90s, things went, you know, Lifetime movie. Yes. And so she's back. She did the show. So we went to go see her at this thing. Okay, so now we can focus. So you stop by your thing. Stop by the thing. He took pictures and I waited around the corner. <laughs> Go ahead. Because I didn't want people, you know, I'm standing over my star looking, oh, look here. And then people are passing going, bitch, aren't you? Wait a minute. I don't know. I just see it so differently. Bitch, you are the queen of saying what people think of me is none of my goddamn business. I also don't want to be a sitting duck for people to say, because um, this is what people do to me. And uh, this is very telling. They'll go, the, the, somebody, if somebody comes up to me and say, wait a minute, are you RuPaul? I'll say, no. And because you know what that signals to me? It means they want to do this volley. They want to do this bit yep. where I, where it's, and let me throw you a ball. Okay. And you're supposed to answer back. And I stop the ball and go, no. I do the same thing. This is what, I, and a traffic cop said this to me the other day. And I had to stop myself because I usually, my impulse is to say, bitch, you know who I am. Right. That's my impulse. And I, this traffic cop, this black female traffic cop and I thought the bitch was about to come out of her mouth right. <laughs> she did, and I stopped that shit I said no no uh uh-uh. uh <laughs> shit that bitch will knock that bitch right back in my mouth <laughs> but you know have you noticed how straight men white men are calling each other bitches now they'll go bitch what yes they're doing it now it's this here's the real tea though when is the last time Michelle Visage has been around a straight man? That's a good point. That's a good point you've teased up there. So I don't know. But well, they're using it now. At like bars? Everyone. They're all they're saying it to one another. Straight men. Appropriation. And can I just call it like what it really is though? Like the real tea? I'm gonna say like ninety nine percent of um the gay culture and the sayings and slang have been taken from black women. That's true. Okay, sure. It's it's a, it's an attitude. It's a irreverence, and I love it, and it's fantastic. Uh, I've got lots lots of friends who do who do it. Great friends. Yeah. No. Well, hmm, no. But at the same time, due to the fact, and consequently, and uh-huh. moreover, um, I'm not mad at it. 
I'm have not the mad straight at men it. doing I'm it. I'm not mad at any language. Use all the words you can. Back to you, hiding around the corner from your star, which yeah. is almost as insane as. Well, see, I don't want anybody to say, "Is are you?" And um, oh, can we no, take a that picture? I understand. Can we take I a understand. picture? Yeah. Bitch, I got dinner reservations to see Mickey Motherfucking Howard. Bitch, I don't have time to be taking no pictures or for this game of the charades of you saying. Aren't you? It's like, you know who I am. Yeah, it's like Monica and, and Brandy. It's like, do you know? Oh, uh-huh. yeah, you know who he is. Mm-hmm. You know who he is. Uh-huh. uh-huh. So I don't fuck around with it. No, that. I get it. I was trying to find the picture uh, of Richard Lynch. I was speaking at the University of Limerick the night that you got your star. Did you speak in all Limericks? Yes, that was very difficult. Oh, I bet. So I was through the power of the internet. Listen, I was out to dinner. We went to dinner before the speaking thing and bless them. But with the power of the internet, I was able to watch you get in your star live. Meanwhile, we're out to dinner and I ignored everybody, but I was able to sit there and watch you get your star on the walk of fame. Oh, because it was nighttime when you were watching. Yeah, it was nighttime. And there we are, it's me and my friend Anna watching you at the restaurant. And uh, we were able to pull you up and watch live. Oh, Coke whore from the club. Double fister. Double fister. Double fister mister. Yeah. At the, at the trying to get all those drinks in uh, at the Copacabana, I would have a big cocktail before I got to the club. And what, was, what was your drink of choice? It was um, vodka with just a little bit of orange juice, a little bit of maybe cranberry. It really wasn't the screwdriver. It was just the drive. It was just the drive. And uh, vodka cranberry, which is also known as a Cape Cod, is it's it? It's a Cape Cod. Yes. Um, yes. And you know what a ma- madras is? A madras is uh, uh, cranberry juice and orange juice in vodka. So it's it's a screwdriver and a Cape Cod mixed together. You've been sober for how many years? 18. Do you ever miss it? Sometimes. <laughs> when I'm at a jazz club. When I'm at a jazz club. Fair enough. You know, because um, George and I were walking around our neighborhood in uh, the West Village, and there were uh, there's all these little bitty jazz clubs, and I... You, you peek your head in, and there's just a bar, a trio, and some tables. And if you don't drink, it's kind of like, hmm. I imagine my fantasy is I put on a gorgeous suit with a flower and a pocket square and a gorgeous hat and a walking stick and um, maybe some – and lots of mannery, lots of jewelry. Ooh, the pimp is coming out in you. I walk into one of those clubs, light up a cigarette and a joint, not at the same time, and have some Cavassier girl and have and just sitting back listening to that jazz. That is this very chic fantasy I and have. And it's a beautiful fantasy. You know, when I used to uh, smoke cigarettes, I would smoke Marlboro Light 100s because they were extra long and I felt like they were more fabulous with really long nails and this really long cigarette. But of course, because I'm a drag queen, I took it the extra step and I used to smoke Marlboro Light 100s with. A cigarette holder. A cigarette holder, as one does. And on the airplane recently, I was watching All About Eve, which I'm sure you saw a hundred times. Um, you know, in the beginning of the movie, you see the guy smoking a cigarette in a cigarette holder, a man. And you don't see that often. You know, he was married to Zsa Zsa Gabor. Addison DeWitt is the, paper, is the newspaper columnist who narrates the film. Yes. And he's the one who said, you're too, sh- you're too short for that gesture. Yes. It went out with Mrs. Fisk. He, you know, he's married. He was married. He's very affected. He was married to Zsa Zsa Gabor and he committed suicide, which um, is interesting. His his suicide note said, I'm bored. (gasps) Shh. I fucking love him. I was going to say that, but I was going to say he's my hero. But okay, okay. Let me just add a sidebar here. We are not glorifying this in any way. This was a hundred years ago. And we're talking about the way he had the balls to just say, I'm bored. I'm done. Goodbye. We are not glorifying. Look at, I'm the mother of, 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 you know, a kid with issues. Trust me, we're not glorifying. Understand that. Exactly. Married to Zsa Zsa Gabor. And he's in lots of movies. Lots. That of- movie is amazing. I mean, there's so many things. Be- the first movie that Marilyn Monroe was ever in. Uh, Celeste Holm, I think, won the yes, Oscar yes, for that. Yes, yes, yes. And Thelma Ritter. Mm-hmm. Who's brilliant. For anybody that has never seen All About Eve, it is brilliant. You can watch it. If you fly Delta, it's on there. You know, so. I was on um, Virgin America, and I'd seen every single movie on there. They had, they had the same old movies from months ago. How did they get away with that? Delta's the same thing. Hey, we're going to take a break. We've got Audra McDonald, Broadway diva, six Tony Awards. Not fair. She's going to be with us in a minute, so stay with us. We're going to take a break real quick.
You know, making a website has never been easier than with Squarespace. They are an amazing company with the simplistic drag and drop platform. It is just gorgeous. And there's so many people who listen to our podcast write us letters at RuPaulPodcast at gmail.com explaining how easy it was for them. They also tweet us hysterical stuff. Yes. Talking about our things here. But speaking about letters, I have one here from Tessa. She said she wanted to thank us for reminding her that um, all the included features of Squarespace. She works for a small company called Portland Product Works that owns footwear and apparel licenses for large brands. And since we pride ourselves on being small, indie, nimble, and creative problem solvers, we have a core group of only five full-time employees here in Portland that work across all brands. So everyone has to be versatile, if you know what I mean. Uh We actually have a website that was old, outdated, and wasn't really doing what we needed the site to do, which had more to do. So she happened to hear us talking about how the Portland Lumberjacks use Squarespace for their website in one of our last episodes. And one of their photo models, Joe, actually plays on that team. Hmm. That coincidence of knowing Joe and several other Lumberjacks made me really listen in and have the realization that Squarespace might be the solution they were all looking for. So she revamped the website during downtime at work, finishing a few days. Um, That's all it took was a few days and a few creative solutions to get it 100% of the functionality that they wanted. She was able to save her company thousands of dollars and they keep the site easy to update at a moment's notice to give them a look it's portland product works it's w-e-r-k-s portlandproductworks.com and that's from tessa thank you tessa oh that's brilliant i love hearing that because creative people really thrive and they expand their creativity on squarespace that's why it's designed that way you got it and you can get a free trial with no credit card required just head to squarespace.com slash roof for a free trial and when you're ready to launch use the offer code ru to save 10 percent off your first purchase of a website or domain that's offer code ru you'll be getting a great deal from our friends at squarespace we are back michelle we know uh so many things so many things <laughs> you You were in Ireland all that time. Yeah, yeah. I was in Ireland filming season one of Ireland's Got Talent. Is it going to have another season, you think? I believe so. That's the word on the street. We'll see what happens when the contract arrives. So it did well. It did really well. How many television eyes do they have in Ireland? Well, there's four and a half million people. That's like uh, L.A. That's, That's less than people in L.A. It was so much fun in our... Sweet Zach that performed to the RuPaul number. Did you know um, Marlon Ungaro? Yes. Why? I'm just wondering because um, uh, Zach Milne reminded me. But don't pull up a picture of Marlon Ungaro. Why? <laughs> because it's going to give you the wrong impression. Because Marlon Ungaro is moved on to Paris, if you know what I mean. Wasn't Marlon an extravaganza? Yes. Marlon was an extravaganza. Uh-huh. Oh, is that a picture of me and Marlon and Garo? No, that's you and a pot. Zach Milne is otherworldly. I am not worried about this kid succeeding at all. Well, he got all the way to the finals. He was amazing. He was so great that we brought him back on the wild card. And who did win? They are called RDC, Rhythm Dance Company, and they are amazing. And the thing is, there was like 50-something of those kids and well-deserved. Let me tell you, they worked hard. It was like kind of... Um, Billie Jean is the name of the woman who owns the the dance school, so it's her dance company. So it's kind, it's all in the Janet Jackson, Michael Jackson kind of group number. The way they do their choreography, but the thing that works in Ireland, the way they vote, is you've got the whole town very pride prideful, very proud country Ireland is. So they're from RDC is from Cork, so all of Cork came out to vote for the fifty something kids and zach is only one kid by himself where was zach from um he was from finglas in dublin and dublin is a city they don't come out like the way the country folk do to vote for their kids they're proud and they are amazing but i think it was kind of a different voting situation did you ever get booed because of decisions you made yeah of course yes of course i've got booed i've gotten booed by you know, comments that I made. I try to be kind and fair, but you know, somebody's going to get hurt. Somebody's tummy's going to get upset. So, of course, I got booed. But at the end of the day, I'm the judge and they aren't. That's why I'm there because somebody has to have a sound mind to say, look, you're a great dancer, but this group is a better dance troupe or whatever. And at the end of the day, Rue, I might not be, you know, a principal dancer for the Joffrey Ballet, but I've danced enough to know they're a good dancer, they aren't. So that's my job and somebody's going to do it. And thank God it's me. You think Zach should have been 
the winner? Oh, I think any one of those finalists could have won. Um, and it's not even a pageant answer, I'm being completely honest, because they all did such different things. Zach definitely needed to be in the final. We brought him back. Uh, he was our one of our wild cards. We brought him back because he needed to be in that final. But he is so different, like to the ballroom kids and to the traditional Irish dancing kids in the RDC. Zach, what he does is so ahead of his time. It's queer centric. It's important. It's necessary. And I don't know if everybody's going to understand it because it's before his time, but he 100% deserved to be there. And he 100% has a massive future. How long were you in Ireland? I was only of the semifinals and the finals only took a week. I was there for 10 days and then I went over to England for a week. Oh, I thought you were there for longer. I am so honored to be doing this job. I literally have so much fun doing it. And um, being over there in Ireland, they're such amazing people. But um, my breasts caused quite a stir on the final, Rue. Who came for your titties? Some moms that were watching the show. So wait a minute. So you're filming the show. So we're filming the show and it's live. So I don't know what's happening on social media. Um, my friend Anna comes running over and says, girl, your titties are lighting up Twitter. I had no idea what was going on. So... Apparently, as we're live, every, these mothers on Twitter were getting upset, but they loved my eyewear. Did you always wear glasses? Yes, because the stage is further away and mama had to see it. And I don't I don't have my glasses. Let me get my monocle. And I had a red gown on, a red Giovanni gown, and then I had three pairs of red glasses and I couldn't decide which one. So we were live. Each time we came back from commercial, I was wearing a different pair of glasses. You bitch. Yes. You show off. Yes. Oh, my goodness. So as I was thinking I was being really fun and creative and Twitter was going to light up for my eyewear, which they did. It was the conservative, you know, Catholic sided moms that were kind of having an issue with my my decolletage, my cleavage uh, hanging out so much. And I I had to kind of lay down the law and say, listen, guys, this is what has set women back all these years. We didn't fight to get out of the kitchen and fight for our right to vote by body shaming and telling, you know, she has too much, too much breasts. What, what is it going to do to have cleavage showing to your children? Your, your mom, you have the same cleavage that I have more or less. So I kind of had to shut them down. And uh, I see nothing wrong with a woman if she wants to show her body, whether she bought it or has it. I think she should go for it. Well, I mean, you're trying to feed a nation, darling. I mean, has anybody been breastfed in that country? Rue, I just think it was ridiculous. Like, my breast wasn't out. It was cleavage. I wasn't having sex on top of the judging panel with Louis Walsh, though that could have been a sight for sore eyes. Meanwhile, I feel like, you know, it's this is not 1927. I don't know. It's, you know, an, an anatomy here. And it's not even anatomy. It's not even my whole breast. It was ridiculous. Butt crack is a whole different story. I wasn't selling no crack. So, okay, so you were there all that time. Wow. I'd love for you to come over for the finals for season two. I know you were busy this time, but maybe next time. Um, And, uh, you know, now this Vanjie thing. Now, of course, by the time this comes on, we will still be talking about Vanjie on, on the TV, on Drag Race. Correct. But we held our tongue for a long time because we knew Vanjie was coming. Yes. And were, were you surprised that other people were able to get on the, the Vanjie wagon? Here's how it really went down, Rue. This is what happened. She was, you know, leaving and doing her thing. And I'm telling you, if we would have let her do her thing and Miss Vanjie, Miss Vanjie, then go off, she would have been off into the ether sphere with the other first gons and we wouldn't have thought twice about it. But the way she said it, in my head, I knew that you were going to react some kind of way. And then you looked at me and said, I didn't get her name sarcastically. And I knew that was my opening point to make you crack up. People love her, and now it's like the most iconic exit ever. But I'm telling you right now, it wouldn't have been as iconic if you didn't die the way you died. And every single time I do it and just go, Miss Vanjie, Miss Vanjie, it would not be what it is today. But also, right? what you didn't see also in the, uh, what do they call it on the flies? Those They call it um, OTFs. Mm -hmm. uh, she was narrating so beautifully. And when you see her audition tape, she's so good. So she, the audition was great. She narrated, you know, the, uh, uh, the pieces to the camera when they're just alone. In the confessionals. Uh, so compelling, so fun. And then I don't know if it's because of what you and I did, but the girls backstage, uh, 
episode after episode, they keep bringing Vanjie it's up. It's because of what we did. Because what we did. No, I couldn't stop. I mean, you know how to get me. Correct. This is another thing that I don't know if I've, we've talked about this on the air, but every time I say I've made some decisions. Right. Every time I say that, I think of Michelle because the first for the first few years, I couldn't say the word decisions. I would say decisions. Yes. <laughs> And she would, I could sense her going, bitch, that's not how you say that word. But now, you guys, Rue won't even look my way. When he says, I've made some decisions, he won't even glance at me. (laughs) Because this bitch will call me out on it. There's nothing to call out. You've been perfect. Yeah, but I have to deliberately, because how do I do it? I go, I've made some decisions. Yeah, you take a break after some. Yes, because I can't, I can't, because if I say it the way I want. I've made some decisions. (laughs) I've made some decisions. <laughs> I will say she's probably my top three of my favorite Whatcha Packins of all time. Love her. Oh, really? Uh, she was so fun. I literally said to her, where the fuck was this? Oh, my God, that performance. And then when she does that death drop and her shoe flies off. Nobody even talked about the shoe. Why did nobody talk about the shoe? And that little pussycat heel. Yes. She's wearing that little pussycat pussy heel. Pussycat, bitch, kitten. It wasn't even a pussycat. Yeah, 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 kitten heel. God. Amazing. But what a lot of people don't realize is that, you know, when Michelle and I did Morning Drive Radio, I'm notorious for messing up words. I I say them wrong. What was I I said something earlier Oh, earlier today with um, Alex, I was trying to say irrelevant, which is a hard word for me to say. Irrelevant. Irrelevant. I have to really think about it because it reminds me of irreverent. Well, they're very similar. They're very similar, but my brain. Yes, like Mickey Howard and Misha Paris. Misha Paris, Mickey Howard. Mickey Mickey Howard, Howard. Mickey Mickey Sharon. Yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, and over the years of working with Shell on Morning Drive Radio from the very beginning, she will always call me out when I have messed up a word. So, bitch, I'll call any bitch out. Yeah, well, that's why. And you call me out. That's why I call you out because I'm trying to get your ass back. <laughs> because from I'm now like, on, you guys are going to watch it and you're going to hear Rue say, I've made some decisions. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've got Audra McDonald right after this. Girl, Casper mattresses have revolutionized the mattress game. They aren't playing, honey. And have you noticed that there are other companies that are trying to copy their thing? But nobody's as good as Casper mattresses. You know what happens when people try to copy. Yes. They always fail, honey. Ain't nothing good as the real thing. Hey, girl. Casper's an online retailer of premium mattresses for a fraction of the price. Now, they combine multiple supportive memory foams for a quality sleep surface with the right amounts of both sink and bounce. Now, I have the original and I have the wave yeah and they are different the original is a little firmer but the wave is like heaven on earth it really is it is so unbelievable they also have breathable designs to help you sleep cool and they regulate your body temperature throughout the night they even arrive right to your doorstep in a transportable box and casper isn't just a mattress company they also offer sheets pillows bed frames and even dog beds and i am not kidding you i have posted pictures on instagram uh-huh. on my story my dog bella who's a senior dog yeah she has not been able to get off of her casper dog bed it is like her throne not that she she can't no she, she just loves doesn't it. want to she loves it so much oh my god thank you for making that clear <laughs> everyone in the family sleeps comfier than ever before the casper wave changed our lives the dog bed bella is like I, and it's big. Oh, I love that. It is fantastic. If for some reason you're still not sure about getting a Casper, I don't know what y'all are waiting for, you can be sure of your purchase with Casper's 100-night risk-free sleep on a trial. Did I mention free shipping mm. and returns hey. throughout the U.S. and Canada? So what are you waiting for, honey? Get $50 towards select mattress purchase by visiting Casper.com slash Rue. Use that offer code RU at checkout. Terms and conditions apply. We love you, Casper. We are back from our break. Audra McDonald is here. Now, the big thing here is to see how I cannot make, not let Michelle Visage dominate the conversation okay, with Broadway Michigan. I won't even say a word. Yeah, but, but let me I just want that you. to be musical, Broadway Michigan. Yes! That. <laughs> You know, but let's talk about this because, you know, yes. I, I just came out about a year and a half ago as a Broadway queen, you know, a theater queen. And I, but the reason I, I didn't want to admit it is because there's a certain preciousness surrounding the Broadway. But this said, let me just do my impersonation. Do it. This is how the theater people and I grew up with all this stuff. But um, well, last time I was doing um, Twelfth Night, I think we were in Poughkeepsie. You won't believe <laughs> 
what happened on opening night? You <laughs> won't believe this. Um, you know that sort of preciousness surrounding it? Well, yes. Well, it's, I mean, it's, I think it's the nature of the beast. It's the nature of what we do. So there is a bit of preciousness and, and, um, what, a, a, a delivery with yes. with everything that we need to talk about. There has to be a the bit of grand. a there's a grand delivery. But honey, doing what you do, there's the delivery too. There's a precious preciousness there. Yes, and there's a drama there as well. That's I think true. that's why probably why there is such a sort of like a, a love between the two art forms. Yes, you know, I think so. Absolutely. I, I disagreed with that, remember, because I felt like the theater community is the most loving and open and welcoming community. But experiencing it through my other daughter's eyes. They are so cliquish. They are not letting her in. Uh -huh. She came what? late. So it's kind of me going, oh, maybe Rue was a little bit right. Oh, oh but the, the difference between the drag thing and the, the theater thing is the drag thing is... Uh, the, the the facade is up front. That's what the business is. It's it like is about we're, the facade. We yeah. are all facade and none of this is real. So <laughs> we start there. Right. But, you know, it's just really interesting. And listen, I accept, I accept all worlds now, you know. <laughs> yes. But I even in junior high school in the theater thing, the kids would take on this affectation yes. of... Darling, <laughs> really? You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, I, I, I don't think... I mean, I have to maybe... Friends will tell me that I was that way. I don't think I was that way because for me, theater was the way that I could feel normal and and find a way to sort of express myself. So for me, it was my way through to being normal in mm -hmm, a way. Mm -hmm. So there was no affectation, I don't think, with me because for me, it was like, okay, well, now now that I'm out on stage performing and, and singing and dancing, I feel a little bit normal so I can go up and talk to this person mm, because yeah. I, I kind of have more of a sense of self and I have more confidence yeah. than I necessarily, than I wouldn't have had before, right. you know, because yeah. I was so, so, so socially awkward as a kid. So for me, it gave me that. So maybe that then maybe turns into affectation. I don't know. how seriously you take it because my daughter Lily was the same way. She yeah. battled a lot of dark stuff and theater brought her out of her shell. Yeah. So I think it really depends that those people exist. Yeah. And those people exist. That's the truth. I think that's, that's yeah, absolutely. And like in the opera, in the opera world too, you've got people who are like, darling, I <laughs> the voce, the voce, and then you have other people like, girl, come and sit down. Yes. Screeches, you yes, know. Yes, so yes. and and everything in between. And I gravitate towards the girl, come and sit down. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean. Yes. What was your first Broadway show uh, that I saw or that I was in? That you were in, The Secret Garden. Uh Wow, we we're just talking about. Yep, yeah, you're just talking 1991? about 1991. Yeah, uh, yeah. I I joined it late, uh, last two months of the run on Broadway, actually, and I played the Aya, so I sang in Hindu. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> and I wore a little bindi and all that stuff. Yeah, that was my Broadway debut. Your Broadway debut. Yeah, and then after that I did Carousel, but my Broadway debut was The Which Secret Garden. Which is coming back. I know, I know, with another sort of multicultural cast, which I think is kind of That's fantastic. lovely. And yeah, yeah, what yeah. was the first Broadway show you saw? Um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was Starlight Express. Yes! Really? Oh my goodness, that's fabulous. With Andrea McCardle? Andrea McCardle, yes. yes, and all of them roller skating around yes. everywhere. Yes. That you seems was... like it was spectacular, though. Well, it, I couldn't tell you what the plot was. Well, you uh -huh. know what it was based it was on? Cat. Thomas the Tank Engine kind of bastardized. Uh -huh. Really? And, yeah, and peop, the author was upset that Andrew Lloyd Webber was doing this kind of bastardized version. Because mm. it was sort of like cats on roller skates. Yeah, yes. that you sounds know? fabulous. Like yes, and, yeah. and it was amazing. They were roller skating around. Every time they'd be like, five, four, three, two, one, they'd start the big races. And, uh -huh. and you were like, how is everybody still standing and belting and skating? And uh -huh. But I couldn't tell you the plot if no. you paid yeah. me a million dollars. I have no Twilight idea. Is the plot minutes. important? No, not, not with all that roller skating. Yeah. No, it didn't matter. It didn't <laughs> matter at all. Did you used to roller skate in I the do. day? I have my roller skates in the dressing room across the hall from here. Because in on the set where we are, there's a lot of flat surfaces. Yeah. So I have them right next door. I used to love, we would, in Fresno, California, we'd go to Roller Town. Yes. On the weekends, and we'd get up there and we'd skate. And we, my favorite thing was skating backwards and trying to comb my hair. Oh my so, good! What was oh your jam? Was it cool? Was it cool in the cool gang? Ladies the night. Gang. Yeah. Come on! Yeah. Nice. yeah. In fact, that was playing on Sirius XM as I was driving down here today. It now, was wait, now because you are such a Broadway legend and you love the theater and all, do you do you are you always thinking of oh my goodness that would make a really good Broadway show do you have a team of people who you who you can who you put shows together with or no. think oh, let's try to make this happen no I'm not I, I don't have that kind of creativity I wish I did I'm not good at 
creating things from the ground up. I can interpret. Mm -hmm. That's what I think, that's where my strength lies. Mm -hmm. I can interpret something. Someone can come to me and say, all right, we're, we're going to do this. Um, we want to see your take on it. And, that, and I can find my own special take on mm -hmm. something. But if someone were to say, create something, I'd be like, um, you know, really? mm, that's so I, interesting because yeah. you were, you were talking about Charlotte Express and the plot and that, that it was fantastical, but there yeah. wasn't a storyline. I would think that you'd think uh, you'd see somebody go, oh, you know, there's a beginning, middle and end, like a uh, roller rink in Fresno mm. where a girl, uh, <laughs> you know, what? it would start there. All she wants to do is straighten out her hair so she can comb it while she's skating backwards. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> and then put it in her back exactly. pocket. And put it in her back yeah. pocket. Yeah. yeah. No, I don't have that. I don't have that kind of creative gene. Like my, my sister's an amazing writer and she can write and create stories and 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 create films and and then I'll try and be in them but I I don't have the ability to come up with something or I, I I'm not to the degree that somebody would pay to see it yeah <laughs> I don't think. what foundation do you have on right now what is that that color is really good for you did I don't, you bring it with you no did your, your makeup girl do it your your glam oh, squad did uh -huh, it jen, uh -huh. did, it. jen did it so yeah. i have no idea She's a good, I, you know i bet what does she put on jason she puts um is it makeup forever we'll ask later but she it's does a good, like makeup it's a forever. Good is it? i haven't even you. seen it yet no, i came really in good. and she put it on and then i walked in here so i have now, no idea now i've got a lot of questions for you yes um, dear no you've got uh, like like 30 children you have how many children do you have how many, how many people have come out of your body? I, okay, only two have come out of my body. Uh -huh. One 11 months ago and one 16 and a half uh, years ago. Remember, she left Shuffle along because she got pregnant. I was quite pregnant. Yes. And then I have two stepsons as well. So there, I I have, there's four total. Because you were you were PG when I saw Shuffle Along. Yes, yes. I was. Yes, it honey. Was so, it's, it was such a great show. That was an emotional show because you went there... So, I mean, how do you do that? How do you go home? How do you leave the theater having gone to that emotional place? Yeah. And mm. then say, oh, um, I like, uh, give me the um, the salmon mm. with the, um, oh, honey, don't forget. How do you, <laughs> how do you if go only from I was asking for the salmon. Because <laughs> you know I'm saying I want the double hot fudge. <laughs> That's me. Yes. That is me. You have to learn to leave it at home at the at the theater. In fact, I just I just came back from London. I was doing Billie Holiday over there. Right. I thought you were doing it till November. No, I just no. finished. I finished in um I finished uh, beginning of September. Lady I Day. Home, like, yeah, Lady Day at Emerson's mm -hmm. Bar and Grill. I was mm -hmm. doing it over there. And um, that one was a really hard one to learn how to, I got to leave her at the theater. Mm -hmm. That's a dark, heavy life and a heavy lift of a show. Mm -hmm. And um, same thing with Shuffle Along, although there was a lot of lightness in that. There was yeah. still a lot of darkness that my character went through. Um, because if you bring it home with you, you'll never have a life. Mm -mm. You, yeah, you but won't. your body doesn't know the difference. Your body literally is going through that yeah, at that's that true. moment on stage. So your body has a memory. How did you say, body, um, that was just not... You, I mean, for me, that takes it. There's a wind down. I mean, don't you feel that after you've like either done, you know, whether you're dash filming. someone's dreams by eliminating them from the show. <laughs> 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 yes, like, every on. week. Come on, but even when you we were doing much more performing, when yeah. you were first starting out, I remember you, and you were doing tons of performing. And when you take all that, I mean, you take all of that off and you go home, you're not still being big and fabulous at home. You have There's a wind down, right? Well, that's what, that was back when I used to smoke weed. <laughs> <laughs> but I can, oh. I can, she's 100% right. You're right, you're yeah. right. Yeah. There's, it's taking off the drag. Yeah, exactly. And, and you know what? As performers, we, we have to take off the drag yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, otherwise, I mean, because you, can, you can't sustain that. I no. Mean, you can't. No. And we can't talk to Audrey without talking about the fact that she's won six, six. Tony Awards. Six. I was there the night she won the sixth one. Oh, when I lost it. No, I, no, no, oh, I, you I lost, lost it. Oh, you, I you had lost, lost your it. Composure <laughs> because, <laughs> and were you on the arm of Hugh Jackman? That's what yes, it was. Yes. He was leading her backstage because it was such a, an emotional. I lost uh, it. I, yeah. I lost it. And I saw you. I remember this. You were going to get ready to come on and present or something. And I saw you. And I wanted to tell you how much I loved you. And you, he's so sweet. Literally, Mama Ru, you just, you bowed. You just like, a, you did like, a, I don't know if it was a curtsy or a bow, but you just bowed. And I was trying was to talk to you. But you were even one of those things. You were like, you were like, no, no, no. You don't need to just, I'm just acknowledging you. And then you mm, go on. Yes. It was so, and I think because you saw the mess, uh, mess of well, the state that I was no, in. No, I, I'm not afraid of emotions, but I, I believe in letting them come on through. And, yeah. and, and if anyone deserved to be emotional, Amen. Amen. six Tony Awards. And three, 
I think by the age of 28. That's 28. So she, like when Verdon did, like she's in a list of very few. Uh, Shirley Booth, I think she, you're in a list of very few. Yeah, yeah. I, I you know, it's, I, I'm, I'm the luckiest person no, on the planet. Uh, no, 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 I am. I mean, every, I mean, there's so many people that deserve, that deserve, I mean, this, I, I don't know where to put that whole thing right, of right, the six right. Tonys. So it, I don't live with it on a regular basis because mm. it's, it, it doesn't even feel like it happened to me because it's just, it's, cr- it's crazy. Yeah. And I know that I will never win another Tony award ever again. And that is fine. Why? You know? Is there a Why limit? No, because it just won't happen again. Oh, and no, 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 no. And I, no, 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 no. It's mm-hmm. not, it's not, it's not me being humble or anything. It's just people saying she doesn't need another one. I see what you mean. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And I, I don't, I mean, it's, 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 it's past anything I could have ever dreamt of. Right. But then there's moments of Ben Platt and Dear Evan Hansen. Oh, oh my goodness. So these moments come along and though you may say that, there was nothing that could have surpassed that performance to yeah. have taken yeah. that Tony no, away no, no, from no, no, him. No, absolutely. So you never know. One never knows. But right. you know, that's not why we do it, is it? No. no. That's no. not why any of you us do it. Because you have to do I it. I know what's going to get her seventh, to. her seventh Tony. You know what it is? What's playing you. Be? It's a show. It's playing <laughs> me, yes. It's a show called A Little More Love, The Melba Moore Story. Oh, do it. Oh, my God. How yes. about that? And it goes from pearly yes. up yes. up until pearly. when she was on. Yep. Until so she was up on welfare, and then her comeback. I think she had made a comeback Ooh. on Broadway doing something else. Mm. But the, but the idea of this uh, Broadway star who goes to pop star who goes to a bigger R and B star loses everything and then everything. comes back. That would be a great see, story. And you're see, you're the creator. Oh, he is. You well, are a creator. Were you always that? Always. Always, even as a child, you're yes. like, what if, what Actually, if? Actually, before you came in here, we were talking about The Matrix, and I want to ask you about your kids, too, but mm-hmm. uh, we're talking about the the concept. I, I felt like I was the kid who was on the operating table who I said, um, the anesthesia is not working. <laughs> I can I can see that um, I can the emperor is not wearing any clothes, you know. And so right. I like to see the possibilities and what could be, and why don't we put on a show and do this? You yeah. stand over there, and, you know. So being a creative person, you yeah. have these children – who are these people who have come through your body? What are they like? <laughs> you know, how do you how do you nurture them and navigate, help them navigate their well, lives? Well, I'll tell you what, and I'll ask you this, Michelle. If you mm. see, they come in who they are. Yes, they are who they are. From I mean, in utero. Mm-hmm. I, I I mean, I recognize. I mean, my this baby that I had eleven months ago was a wild child in utero, and she is a wild child. She, our joke is when she came out, she was like, "You're gonna lie." <laughs> That's literally how she came out of my body. Oh just my like, God. I am here. Epic. Yeah, because uh-huh. I'm, I was 46. I should not have been pregnant. I should not. I mean, she was such a surprise. Yeah. It's like, And so I think you just have to, you have to love and guide them. Mm-hmm. You can't. I don't think you and 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 they tell you what they want, mm-hmm. and yes. it, whether it's they're actually vocalizing it or you you're seeing it the way they're bumping up against things mm-hmm. that don't work for mm-hmm. them, mm-hmm. as opposed to things that do work for them. So it's just love and guidance. Um, I think that's all you can do. I, I, I that's what I'm finding, especially having right. such a spread for like sixteen and a half yeah. and eleven month old. I'm just like I'm just there to. But you got a babysitter is what you got. Yeah. Uh, well. Forget you it. No, you <laughs> have children that uh-huh. sixteen years. They have their own lives. I was say, they're, yeah, they're out partying. Sixteen, a boy or girl? I have my my daughter, sixteen and uh-huh. a half. Yeah, they yeah. are. On their- what did your parents look in hindsight? What did your parents do to guide you to to what you do? Uh, I mean, you've had an amazing. Well, career. and this is what I mean by loving them and guiding them. I was hyperactive. I was not doing well in school. I was over dramatic. I was kicking my teachers. I was crying and running away from school and just really hyperactive and the doctor said "Mm, you know she's really got some issues we can you know Ritalin had just become available Mm -hmm. it was like that and my parents were like oh god what do we do boy does she love to sing boy Mm. does she love to me and then they went out one night and they watched this um this at this dinner theater in my hometown of Fresno California and they saw this junior company troupe on stage singing before the main show and they said maybe that's something mm-hmm. she could do mm-hmm. and that would channel that energy and so in my own way I was telling them who I was and they 
listened and figured it out and put me into that company. And that's what started me on my path. I love that. You and know, so the answer is be present. Be present and, and listen and and see who they are and let them tell you who they are and then guide and love. I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying learning. to figure it I out. Michelle, it. you tell me. I love it. Don't try to fix everything. And this has been my Ooh. mistake mm. because... As a mama, you want to fix everything. As a mother, you want to fix everything. My mama was gone before I had my babies. Mm. I had nobody to turn to. They don't come with a manual. Mm-mm. We had nobody. It was just my husband and I didn't have... I had a great family growing up. We didn't have a pot to piss in. Yeah. But... Because we were doing okay, I was working on the radio, I had a steady job and insurance, so I want to fix everything. Mm-hmm. I want to move it before they get hurt by it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's mm-hmm. a disservice that they I got to learn. Correct yes. Now. Amen to that. All right. That's some learning right now, too. We have got to say goodbye to Audra McDonald because we have Aww. to go to work right now. <laughs> I know. But, but I can talk uh, to her foundation. No, I'm so I excited know. to be here. I'm this so happy fun. you're here. <laughs> Listen. Um, we get a part two. We at have some to. Point. We have yeah. to get a part two. Yeah. Talk to you later. Next time. Bye. Can I get an amen? If you can't love yourself, how in the hell you gonna love somebody else? Can I get an amen? And don't forget to subscribe on iTunes. If you can't love yourself, how in the hell you gonna love somebody else? Amen.